glowing pillar into the sky. Drive into it. Yes, it looks like hot death, but it's so much better than getting scrambled by the instability. All right, here we go. We're driving right on into the hot death. Yeehaw! Welcome everybody to a new series here on the channel, Pacific Drive. I'm very excited to play this game. I am the Bearded OG, and yeah, the this game came out uh, when I was on a business trip, so I'm a little bit late getting started with it. I also had some problems very early on when I did get back from my trip and installed the game. It continued to crash on me, so it took a day or two for the uh, devs to patch the game so that that did not happen. So now it seems to be playing stable uh, for me in my uh, a few test playthroughs that I've gone through. Uh, I also tell you up front that I did watch about two hours or so of footage from another YouTuber um, when I didn't know when I was going to be able to play it myself. Uh, so I'm pretty much familiar with what happens all the way through the uh, end of the first mission. But after that, I know nothing else about the game and have not continued to watch anybody else play it just because I don't want to spoil it for myself. <clears throat> the other thing um, about this game that is kind of near and dear to my heart is the fact that I actually was born and raised on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. So, yeah, I was born in the, uh, the city of Port Angeles, spent my childhood on the Olympic Peninsula, and then um, also uh, several years of my young adult life there, too. So I'm very familiar with the, the area. I'm a native to the area, so that also is an appeal to me anyways to, to play the game but from what i've seen and what little i've played myself with just some play testing uh this is a fun game and um i think i think i'm going to really enjoy it uh so uh if you guys find yourself enjoying this playthrough please take a moment to hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you've already subscribed thank you very much really appreciate it and um let's get started with this so we're gonna hit the play button we're gonna start a new uh playthrough here and uh, we're gonna get started now, one of the things about this game um, that's caused some controversy is that it doesn't let you... Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, in 1947, the Olympic Peninsula became the staging ground for a promising new technology. As rumors of its utopian creation spread, so did stories about overnight evacuations, unsolved disappearances, and unnatural encounters. That sounds a little foreboding. Um... In 1955, the government walled off a section of the peninsula to establish the Olympic Exclusion Zone. For 30 years, the zone's borders grew until the government withdrew and sealed every access point. What happened inside was never disclosed. Okay. So, um... I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to me, though. All right, so yeah, let's get started here. There's a, a ferry boat, which is a common sight in Washington State. Been on one many times myself. And uh, so what we do is we start off here as a delivery dr driver, um, and we're delivering something to somewhere in the Olympic Peninsula. This vehicle that we're currently in is not um, the vehicle we're actually going to use. So let's get started here. Yeah, Olympic Peninsula 1998. That is where we are. I in I actually lived on the Olympic Peninsula in 1998. That's funny. Yeah, so I was there at that time. And I don't remember anything about um, <laughs> an exclusion zone or anything like that. I'm just teasing. Of course, this is just make-believe. Uh, but anyway, a couple things I'll tell you about this game from what I what I know. Um, I, like I said, I've, I've test played it a, a few times myself just for a little while, you know, to make sure everything works. And I watched about two hours of footage from somebody else on YouTube. Um, it, there's a lot of reading this game, um, so it's just kind of the nature of the beast, and it's important that you read, you know, most of the stuff in order to really get, you know, the backstory and understand what's going on, and so I will be doing that, but if you, you know, if you don't want to see all of the reading and stuff, um, you can always fast forward to when the action uh, resumes, and I'll, I'll usually put some timestamps in for that, too. Uh, the other thing, too, is because, oh, I know what I was going to talk about, um, the controversy surrounding this game is that you can't save whenever you want. And, you know, the devs have come up with an explanation of their vision for the game, for why that is, and I get that, but the fact of the matter is that if you, you know, if you have to leave in real life, you have to leave in real life. That's just all there is to it. And so, you know, because you can't save, 
when you're um, on a mission, you lose all of your progress and you lose most of your stuff too. Uh, what they have done though is they've added a feature in the game where you can tell the game not, you know, to retain all of your stuff if you, you know, if, if you fail the mission or if you have to leave early. What I think I'm going to do in that case is that if I legit have to leave the game early for real life reasons, I'll turn that feature on first. Um, but if I fail a mission because I screwed up, you know, then I'm going to suffer the penalty of losing all the stuff. And that's something we can set in the menu, you know, right before we we decide to, you know, um, uh, log out of the game, even before we've saved. And, um, the, the, you know, the downside to that, though, is even though you retain all of your stuff, you still lose all of the progress and items from that mission, and you have to do it over. So it's still not really a good solution. But, you know, I, I don't, you know, according to what the devs were seeing, they're not planning on changing that. So it is what it is, and we just have to deal with it. Uh, the other thing I want to let you know, too, is that uh, these, the, you know, because of the nature of this game, with not being able to save whenever you want to, um, these episodes are probably going to be pretty long. So we're, we're probably talking about hour-long episodes, um, which, by the way, is not unusual for me anyways. I usually do a little bit longer episodes than most YouTubers anyways. Um, so we got some weird interference going on here that's disrupting our radio, which is odd as we get close to the zone here. And then, of course, this area here is blocked off, so we have to turn and head in this direction. So, yeah, my episodes are typically a little bit longer, um, and it's just the way that I roll, so hopefully you guys are cool with that. Uh, most people actually are. Most of my viewers like the longer episodes. I know not everybody does, but it is just kind of the way things are going to happen around here, so hopefully you're cool with that. Okay, now we're going to start seeing you know some weird anomalous kind of things happen in here. Um, so let's continue on. Yeah, there's some something's not right. Something's not right here, man. <laughs> as, our, as our delivery driver, there's the wall too. By the way, it's supposed to be like 300 meters high, so it's just an enormous wall to keep people out of the exclusion zone. Of course, we're just an innocent delivery driver here. We work for FedEx, and we're just trying to deliver something from Amazon, and we don't know what the hell's going on. But we got this kind of weird thing in doodle going on here, and oh shit. We just lost all of our power. Hmm, that's very sus. What's gonna happen? Whoa! -ho -ho. Um, mama! <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen, of course. So, yeah, we have just been sucked into the exclusion zone. Now, what's gonna happen? All right, so our delivery van has disappeared, and we are inside the zone on the other side of the wall and weird stuff's going on okay so the first part of the game is basically kind of you know tutorial stuff and uh, so because like I said I've seen it and done it a couple of my times myself uh, we're just gonna move this fairly quickly uh, but what we need to do is just kind of walk this way it's gonna tell us you know how to jump and how to crouch and that sort of thing so we'll get that out of the way and then we're gonna end up here in just a moment at what will be our base in the game uh, which is an auto garage. So press control to crouch. Uh, the graphics in this game are not like state of the art, um, but I think that's more of a design, uh, intentional design kind of thing than, you know, anything else. But you know, the thing is, is you don't really notice it, or at least I don't, because the thing, the alluring thing about this game, besides for me, it, you know, being oh, on the peninsula, coming out there. Olympic Peninsula, oh. hold on. Just the radar's acting up again. You were supposed to tune up this piece of junk years ago. Okay. So, yeah, we will periodically get little voiceovers that will happen. Um, and what I was saying, though, is, you know, the graphics are not, you know, 2024 state-of-the-art, but you kind of don't notice it. It's, it's really the gameplay and the whole concept and the story that, that it, it is really the cool thing about this game. Okay, so this is our car. Everybody... Meet the car. Car, meet everybody. And uh, this is basically the most important thing in this game. It's what's going to keep us alive. And we will find out very quickly that there's more to this car than what, you know, what it first appears. Uh, so if we look in the upper right-hand corner, it wants me to put the wheel back on. So we're going to pick up the wheel here. And we're going to reattach it here. There we go. 
And I don't believe there's anything else for us to do inside this little shop here. It wants us to get in the car, so let's do that. And then it wants us to start the engine. It actually runs and get to safety. So let's put the car in drive and here we go. This is Tobias Barlow and Francis Cook, located in mid zone sector B. Do you read me? I'm picking up your distress signal in the outer zone. It looks like you're somewhere around sector E. Hey, Francis, come here! Yes, it's urgent. Leave that interferometer alone for a second. Something is out there. Okay, so the car kind of pulls to the right, but that's because we have a, a flat. <laughs> hey, we got a live one. Hey, do you copy? Hello? Hello? Is this thing working? They, 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 they don't have a transmitter. We won't hear a thing back. Exactly. Uh, but if they're stranded, could they mean... Uh-oh. They're from outside? They're a breacher? A breacher. Hey, how did you get through the barrier wall? No one's gotten into the zone in ages and lived to tell about it. And if we don't get them to safety, this one won't either. That's a good point. Hey, hey you're in serious danger. The instability's closing in, and it's going to scramble you quicker than beef in a blender. Your closest shelter is a few miles east. Get there however you can, and be quick about it. Okay, so we're filling up our fuel tank here. Looks like that's all we got. Let's put our little jerry can back up here. It's not a very large fuel can. Okay, we got some instability happening, so we got to get moving here. So yeah, the uh, we're gonna learn this in a moment. Ouch! But um, whoa, 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 wait, hold the fall. There it is again. That flip on the spectrometer. I've seen that wave fall before, but where? Could it be? A remnant? That can't be. There hasn't been one in decades. Look at that spectral fingerprint and tell me that doesn't match the remnants exactly. No, no, no. What, what, what we should be looking at is how fast this preacher seems to be moving. Huh. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say they're going about the speed of a... No way. No way to not tell me. They found a remnant and it's a car this time? Holy cripes! No one's had working wheels in here for ages. Boy, I'd kill to know how a combustion engine's still chugging away out there. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, the breacher needs to get to safety. Then we can look into whether that car is a remnant or not. And my heart of hearts, I already know. They're back, baby. Okay, so, basically our car is what they're calling a remnant, which means it's, in some way, it's sentient. <laughs> so it's aware. Um, but I haven't, you know, watched or gotten far enough in the game myself uh, to know what the exact ramifications of that are. So that's something, of course, we will figure out as, uh, as we go along. Okay, here's the garage. And we just lost our wheel. Don't know exactly why that happens. Well, it's scripted, of course, but... Um, okay, let's hop out here. Uh, we're going to need to put this wheel back on... Oh, I guess it's not going to let us do it right yet. Okay, so it wants us to go into the building. We're still in tutorial mode, so we kind of have to do what it says before we can go off and do our own thing. Turn on the power. Flip the... Okay, equip the backpack. Okay, the backpack's over here. Again, I've already oh. been through this part. Who's there? Oh, the shop. Oh, God, it's been breached. You've got five seconds to get the hell out before I... She sounds drunk. Oh, oh my head. Or hung over. Uh, <laughs> Emergency broadcast. Hello, uh, attention. This message is for Dr. Ophelia Turner. We've sent a breacher to your garage on um, official zone business. Now, we have it on very good authority that this person is in possession of a remnant, which has taken the form of a car and, well, uh... Oh. Get off the remnant thing. She's not going to care. Um, uh, right, like I said, super official zone business. Protocol uh, demands that you keep them alive until we can get them to safety. Now, if you do not comply, I will occupy this broadcast channel with a recitation of the entire collection of poems I have personally <laughs> written at 10 years and 17 poems. That sounds terrible. Oh, God, that voice goes like a nail gun to my skull. <laughs> so, another breach. 
breach, Emma. How do you outsiders not understand that Arda didn't build that three Hey, I didn't come here on purpose. Fun, unless you're one of the unfortunate. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I got zapped, man. Wait. I just remembered. I don't give a damn why or how you got here. That's no not very nice. Passing, and I'd kindly like you to get the hell out of my zone. I think that's what we're trying to do. Oh, God, unfortunately, the barrier wall is as fortified against breaches trying to get in as it is against anyone or anything trying to leave. We have to find you a way out. Okay. So you might as well start by fixing up that car. Just don't break anything in my shop with those soft hands of yours. How do you know my hands are soft, lady? I work for FedEx, man. My hands are callous like crazy. Okay, anyway. <laughs> what? Oh. oh. You need help? Well, there's a headset somewhere in the garage. Put it on. The built-in diagnostic will tell you what needs fixing up. Okay. So, um, up in the, in the upper right-hand corner, it wants us to pick up this thing. This is basically, it's called the mechanics eye. It lets us scan stuff and helps us know what's wrong with things and gives us information. Uh, okay, 10 to your wounds at the first aid station. Let's go over here and do that. Okay, that heals us up. Uh, now it wants us to pull the car in. And uh, first we need to pick up the wheel and put it back on here. Okay, I guess I left the car running, which probably shouldn't have done, but that's okay. We have plenty of fuel in here to fill it back up. I'm going to pull in right over the top of this charging station thing. Okay. Craft a replacement door. So this is our crafting station here, and uh, in order to craft the door, we need to uh, get a couple of, of parts. So it wants us to open up the headsets operating system, which is basically our inventory. Um, go to blueprints, crude door, and pin it to the checklist, which is the C key. And these are all the things we need to find, uh, which show up on the left-hand side of my screen in order to make the... Uh, the door. So it says gather items from the abandoned car behind the garage for your checklist. Search the car's trunk. Okay, so that's this guy over here. Okay, we can't open the, the panel, so it wants us to go in here, grab a crowbar out of the toolbox. And we also have um, a couple of other things too. Now the T key will transfer some things into your inventory, but it doesn't transfer all things. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's by design or if that's a bug that they need to fix. Okay, we come over here. Now what we want to do is take the crowbar and put it into our hands, and then we can pry open the trunk. There we go. And then we got some stuff. Now, if I press T, it transfers the glass, but it doesn't transfer these flares. And again, I think that's that might be a, a mistake, but I'm not sure. Um, oh, yeah, no, they're there. We, we have three of them. Okay. Uh, all right, good. Now, let's see, gather items from... The abandoned car behind... Oh, wait, what? Search the dump... Oh, yeah, search the dumpster. Okay, so the dumpster is kind of interesting. It is kind of like a magic dumpster. <laughs> what it does is it gives us free shit. <laughs> so, in this case, it's going to give us... Uh, just because, again, I've played this part of the, the very early part of the game. It's going to give us the scrapper and a couple of flares. There we go. But when we come back to the garage, we can check this, and it might have some, some other stuff for us, too. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to take the scrapper, and we basically use it to salvage uh, the parts of the car and get scrap metal and rubber and glass and bolts and nuts and that sort of thing that we're going to need then to craft other things. And duct tape, too, by the way. Because everybody knows that your car's hood has duct tape on it. Even brand new from the factory, they used duct tape to make that thing. Nowhere to lie. All right, so I think that gets us everything uh, from this car here. Now we should have everything we need to craft our first crude door. So we go into here, we find crude door, and we craft it. Okay, and then we go over here and attach it to the car. Nice. Okay. 
uh, get the repair putty from the locker. So in here we get repair putty. Now repair putty is like this magic shit that just kind of magically repairs stuff. <laughs> uh, here, let's put this down here. Um, we also have a spare tire, which we'll grab later. And let's grab this now in case we need it. But uh, we'll, we're going to keep those things in there for the moment. Okay, so yeah, repair putty is basically... Um, let's go into here. Put that in our hand. No, not that. This. And uh, we basically... It, it, so if we look at each one of the panels, it shows us to what degree the panel is damaged. Like this one is like major damage. This one's about halfway damaged and so forth. Uh, so we basically just use the repair putty. This is like, you know, filler that you would use if you were doing body work on a car. And it will just magically uh, repair all these panels and put them back to their original condition. Um, this tire also has another problem that we'll look at in a little bit. It's loose. Okay, so that used up the first thing of putty. And we're just going to kind of go around and hit everything on the car until the whole thing is completely repaired, or at least as much as we can. Um, I think I think maybe it gives us enough putty to to do um, the first round of repairs here. Okay, let's hit this too. You can see in the upper right hand corner too it says it's 96% uh, repaired. Okay, bumper. Got to hit the bumper. There we go. Okay, so the car is 100% repaired with the putty. Uh, but we also have a flat tire here. So if we press C, we can scan it. And it tells us information about the tire and specifically what we need to fix it, which is a sealing kit. Uh, okay, so repair the flat by crafting and using a sealing kit. So let's go over here and check sealing kit and we'll craft that. Okay, we put the sealing kit in our hands and then we repair the tire. We also can use the sealing kit for repairing um, like cracks and windows and that sort of thing. Now, um, let's put the putty back in our hands. This tire still has just a little bit of damage. I guess it's the hubcap that we're repairing and now it's at 100%. This thing on the wall here also will show us um the status of the car so it says there's something minor wrong with the right left wheel and we're missing the trunk and the bumper in the back now we'll also have a similar display inside the car in just a little bit that'll show us that same information but well, it's very useful okay so scan the loose wheel tells us that it's loose and that we need a mechanics kit to fix it so I think um, I think we have to make that. Or wait, do we have it? Open the inventory. Yeah, we already have the mechanics kit. Okay, so we grab that and we use this on the thing. Now the thing that irritates me a little bit, <laughs> I know it's just a video game, right? But we just consumed that kit. I mean, we had like a steel wrench and a saw and a hammer in there and it just disappeared by fixing a tire. So who the hell ever bought like a hammer used it once and then throw it away what the hell man <laughs> but it is what it is okay install cardboard boxes in the trunk these boxes here will be our initial storage for the car beautiful um next it wants us to install a crafting mat in the trunk which is right here um this is like a portable crafting station that we can use while we're on the road to make things oh <clears throat> there's a little prototype of mine in the garage the arc device hook it up to your car wherever it'll fit all right the arc device is essentially our navigation system there we go it does some other weird stuff too but that that's this beauty really won't what it just is be your tour guide it's your north star and the only way back to safety heck you should consider it the father son and holy spirit if you plan on staying alive that's how important this thing will be to you <laughs> okay very important yes that's my very own invention i'll tell you more about it if you live long enough to use it excellent okay so um let's see get first aid kits from the locker we can actually use this locker for storage too uh so let's grab that and i'm gonna also 
Um, here, hold on a sec. I'm going to grab the the wheel and we're going to put it in here um, as a, a spare. So we have a spare tire. Let's put the medikits in there too. And I'm going to press T to put this, store this stuff in here. Though we're going to be looting a bunch of that stuff as we go along. Uh, we'll keep the flares on us in case we need some light. And we got the crowbar in the scrapper there. Okay. Zone preparation. Store items for your drive in the trunk. So it wants us to store the scrapper in here. Uh, so we'll do it just... Yeah, wait, hold on. Yeah, you got to make sure that this is in the squares or it says you'll lose it. Uh, we want to put two road flares in there. So I guess we need to put these inside the car. Okay. And I guess that's it. Okay, pick up the gear blueprint by the front garage door. Okay, so certain things will, will require blueprints. This one will allow us to make a gear, which we're going to need for different things. And this one is the impact hammer, which we're also going to need here uh, in just a, a, a hot minute here. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, let's fuel up the car. One thing that is, is a little bit odd about this game is that some things require E to pick up. Other things require the mouse thing. I, th I think it's mostly... E to pick up and put back and mouse to activate. Um, but it takes a little getting used to. Okay, so this will allow us to charge the battery of the car. Set. Take a look at the projector against the wall. Okay, good. And when we're ready to go somewhere, uh, we go over to this projector. This is the zone. Within these borders, all matter has lost the ability to hold a constant physical state. What that means is the shape, size, and makeup of just about everything constantly changes mile of grass can turn into 10 miles of swamp in the blink of an eye and it does constantly it's caused by something we call instability we're completely surrounded by it and once you've watched it chew through entire mountain ranges you'll understand that you don't want to get anywhere near it we can only survive in here within pockets of stability that's what you're standing in now and that's what you're seeing mapped on the route planner if we're going to find you a way out of the zone You'll need to build a new antenna. Until then, you won't be able to detect stabilized routes beyond your immediate area. So, you've got to go hunting for parts, and that means taking a drive. Go on, pick a route. The Octavice in your car will then show you where you need to go. Okay, so this is where we basically take our missions. Um, before we do this, though, I want to um, I want to spend just a little bit of time salvaging a few more things out here. Um, so let's grab this guy. And we're going to put them in our hands. We, we salvage everything off of that vehicle. I think... Um, actually, mm, maybe, maybe that's all we can salvage at this point. Does this give us anything here? Uh -uh. Okay, yeah, maybe that's all we could do right now. Okay, so we'll, once we get started on our mission, though, then we'll be able to go out and salvage a bunch of stuff. Um, this chest, uh, or not chest, but, uh, shed seems to be some kind of electrical place that we can't get into right now anyway. And yeah. Oh, here we go. I missed the store here. So this game is all about salvaging. I mean, we are going to be salvaging until the cows come home and then after that too. Um, but that's part of the fun of it too. I, I actually really enjoy games like this where you have to scrap things. Um, actually, here, let's scan this. This is a radio. Okay. Tells us to use the scrapper and we'll get electronics from it. I, I just like that, you know, recycling and sa and scavenging and that sort of thing in games. It's, um, I don't know, it kind of scratches an itch for me, I suppose. Here's a computer. Let's scan that. Okay. Also, scrapper. So these kinds of things, of course, will give us electronics and wiring and what you might expect from that kind of a, uh, of a device. And that's a porta potty. I think that's about all we can do for now here at the shop. Before we take off, um, I'd like to make another scrapper because uh, we're going to need it. Uh, so that way, when when the current one runs out, um, oh, I guess we already have a hand. A hand. We have a new one there because we're going to be doing a lot of scrapping, like I said. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, before we take off, we're going to get caught up on our, our logbook 
And uh, this is the place where I'm going to do some reading. So for those of you who either already know about this stuff or just plain don't want to listen to me read through a bunch of things, what I'll do is I will place a uh, timestamp in the video for you to fast forward to when the action resumes. Uh, for the rest of you, let's go ahead and go through this stuff. So this is our, our clipboard um, button up here, or I guess our user manual is what it's called. Yeah. Um, so anything with the little mail icon on this new information. So this basically tells us that in, uh, you know, we're going to have some controls in our car. Um, uh, this little thing here, for example, gives us some like different mods that we can install on the car. We'll, we'll take a look at that when we get into the car. Uh, this tells us about the auto shop. Basically, this is our base where we can fix the car up. Um, this tells us about using the projector to, you know, plan our drive. And basically each of these spots on the map are called junctions that we can go to. And we'll see, of course, see that in action as we proceed through the game. Um, this tells us about how we can move and, you know, we've already kind of gone through that with the tutorial. Okay. So that clears our user manual. Uh, this just gives us information about, you know, the different devices. Um, some of the stuff I'll read verbatim, some of it is pretty obvious. So riding shotgun with you is perhaps the most ramshackle and yet remarkable example of technology that you've ever seen. It can monitor the zone and just anchor energy and casually teleport the entire car and all its contents a short distance. It may be a work of genius, it may be extremely illegal stolen technology, or it may very well be both. <laughs> okay, uh, nine volt batteries, of course we know, uh, what those are chemicals are chemicals that we use to make things copper wire electronics um glass shards plastic rubber etc um all very obvious stuff so i'm not going to read this stuff verbatim except for maybe this the adhesive properties of this industrial strength product are not to be underestimated it both attaches items and removes skin with terrifying tenacity <laughs> uh, okay road road flares for lighting and that sort of thing okay that takes care of um items um, now for crafting, it tells us about the impact hammer, which we're going to need to make um, very soon because we're going to need it to get uh, what this mission wants us to do. And it's basically just, um, you know, like a handheld jackhammer that busts things. Uh, okay, let's see. What else? Uh, car maintenance, uh, fuel can. Everybody knows what a fuel can does, of course. Uh, wheels. Uh, wheels, from what I understand, um, come in different you know, types. So we have summer tires, we have spare tires. Uh, what is conventionally known as a spare tire is really a whole entire spare wheel. Still, who wants to break <laughs> with convention and start quibbling over details? Um, and then later on, I think we can find better tires uh, for our vehicle too. And let's see what else. Of course, we know, uh, you know, we know what lights do. Uh, utilities, crafting mat. Whoops. Hold on. What did I just do? Utilities. There we go. Uh, the crafting mat is basically our portable workstation, uh, which we just put in the back of the car. Um, the ARC dock. The enhanced version of the ARC device is able to administer rudimentary pain relief and first aid to the occupant of the driver's seat. However, the energy this requires will put a substantial drain on the battery. Okay, so I think this is something we can find later that will help, help heal us, I believe. Uh, everybody knows what a handbrake does. We, have, we don't have one yet, but we'll find one. And then, of course, we know that cardboard boxes are now used for us to store things. Uh, okay, so let's see. We also have uh, refine gear. What has teeth and a bite, but no jaw? Probably a lot of things, actually. This gear is one of them. <laughs> okay, tells us about gears. And then we have equipment. Uh, the mechanic's eye. Basically, this is the thing that we're wearing that allows us to scan things and tells us what we needed to interact with it. And that's it. Okay, so now let's go to statuses. And somewhere, here we go. Okay, so this is a flat. As if nobody knew, knows what a flat tire is. This is a loose wheel. It's a wheel that wobbles and needs to be tightened up. And then essential. Sometimes the dumpster, dumpster knows best. The friendly dumpster wouldn't be your best pal in all the zone if it wasn't handing out things that it thinks you really, really need. Things you definitely, certainly should keep in order to safely make it through the next leg of your journey. Best pal status, TBC. Uh, that's Tobias, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier is the dumpster will give you stuff. Okay. What's this? This is auto shop charging station. This is the thing we drive over and it charges the battery. Workbench, this is the thing we use to make shit. Uh, first aid station heals us up. Fuel pump gives us gas. Friendly dumpster, we just talked about the dumpster parking sensor. 
Uh, I think this thing just tells us, you know, when we're over the battery thing for charging. Uh, route planner we looked at, that's how we plan our missions locker, something we can store stuff in, and that takes care of that. Okay, so that gives us updated, guys, on all of the uh, logbook items. And like I said, as we go along, we'll periodically pop in here and read stuff so we can, you know, just kind of keep up to speed on what's going on in the game. All right, we are ready to um, head out. So what we're going to do is go back to the projector here. And we're going to select this destination, which is our only option for now. We're going to hold the mouse button down, Off you go. and it locks it in. Make a left out of the garage, follow the access road. Oh, the other thing, too, is that when we do select a, a junction here, on the right-hand side, it tells us information about that junction. Um, we're going towards a radio station. Uh, it's damp, forest environment, uh, residential, and um, it's one kilometer for the gateway. So I think what that means is we have... We have to go at least one kilometer away or within one kilometer to get to our gateway to escape, which we'll explain later. Um, and then <coughs> the residential says OK and low, which I'm not exactly sure what that means. It tells us we have perpetual stability, which means it's a stable zone. Um, you know, we're not going to get eaten by the instability. Route analysis tells us information about radiation and storms and other things and how much fuel is there. I'm not entirely sure what all of that stuff means, but I think it just means we have the potential for, you know, uh, uh, some degree of those things. Um, and then down in the lower right section at the very bottom, there's little um, icons that apparently we don't know what those mean yet. So, yeah, we'll figure that out as we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think we're ready to roll. Okay, get in the car. Okay, so now you can see that we have some new stuff in the car. This, of course, is our... Um, uh, our arc device. It's our. It's basically our navigation thing, Uh This is the internal thing in the car that tells us um, the condition of the car and if something's missing. So if right now we're missing a hatch and a rear bumper, which we'll take care of later, and also a panel up in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, so we want to pay attention to this because um, you know our car is our lifeline, and we want to keep our car in good condition. Um, so very important. We take care of our car; it takes care of us. That's really what it boils down to in this game. Over here, we've got this little thing here, which allows us to install, um, you know, different mods that will do certain things, which we haven't gotten to yet. Um, and then we have, like, just a basic readout that tells us if we're in parking mode and if doors are open. What what doors are open? Maybe it's, it's probably the back because the back's open. Um, and it says caution here and has a kind of a yellow thing, but I'm... I think that probably just means be careful we don't have a hatch or a bumper on. Um, okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. This, of course, start, starts and stops the car. This uh, he puts it in gear. This little oscilloscope-looking thingamadoodle here will tell us if there's radiation outside, so we want to pay attention to that. And I think this little gauge here will indicate if we're, if instability is close by. So that that's what I've been able to ascertain from all of that sort of thing. Hey, look at that. We can turn a light on in here. That's cool. I never noticed that before. Uh, this is a radio. Um, I'm not going to be actually playing the radio because I think some of the music in the game is copyrighted. And uh, so, you know, I can't do that on YouTube, of course. So, uh, But if you guys are playing this game by yourself and you're not doing YouTube videos, then by all means, turn the radio on and you'll have some cool music. Okay, let's get moving here. She said we need to hang a Louie. So that's what we shall do. And you don't actually drive to the location, which kind of sucks. I wish we could. Instead, what you do is you drive through these uh, little portal gateway thing middles, and then you kind of just cut scene to where you need to go. Um, which is a bummer. I wish we could just inf drive there, but it's just the way that the game works. Okay, so uh, this again gives us that same information that we saw earlier. And if we just hold the mouse button down, there we go. Okay, and we fast travel to this junction. Junction E5, radio station, residential, damp forest, outer zone. Okay. Perpetual stability. We already know okay, that. Okay, newbie. I'll keep this simple. Don't want to overwhelm that little brain of yours. You'll need a few <laughs> things to rebuild the antenna at the garage. First on the list is plasma. The woods are littered with plasma generators. Look for a research trailer or a spot tower. Well, that's those antenna things zapping you when you get too close. Both are always accompanied by plasma generators. Okay, so this is our first stop here. 
The Octavice is picking up on some plasma generators nearby. Your headset has a built-in scanner. Use it on the plasma generator. It'll figure out the tools you need. Okay, so this is a plasma generator here. And if we scan it with C, it tells us we need an impact hammer in order to like break it open. For the picking. Can't get at it with your hands, though. An impact hammer will do the trick. All right, so we need to make ourselves an impact hammer. Um, if we open up our thingy-me-doodle here and go to blueprints, this is what we need for the impact hammer. We're going to press C to pin that. Um, and we need scrap we'll metal. materials by any means necessary. No one's coming back ever. Transports, homes, outposts, facilities, they've all been abandoned since the zone was decommissioned in 87. Most of those structures won't even be there the next time the instability scrambles the area. So loot to your heart's content. Just loot away. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so over on the left-hand side now, it shows us the parts that we need to make this thing. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, it's nice and stormy out too, but I don't think that hurts us because our health is in the upper left hand corner and we seem to be okay. Uh, all right, so. Old gal. Sasquatch. I love the way these two banter back and forth. Okay, so let's um, scrap all this stuff here for the parts. Uh, press T. When we press T, I think I may have mentioned this already, but in case I didn't, when you press T, it puts most things in your inventory, but it doesn't put everything in. So I don't know if that's a bug or intended, but yeah, it's a thing. Okay. I think that's everything on this car. All right. Now, um, this is, these are sodium lights. If we scan them with C, it tells us we need a hand vac in order to uh, salvage that. And of course, we don't have one yet. We'll have one later. Let's go inside here and uh, keep, continue looting. Now, this game, the way that it works is in order for you to interact with something, it has to highlight. Um, so, you know, you can't just loot any old thing that you come across. It has to be highlighted for you to interact with it. Okay, there's some pressure cartridges, some chemicals, and the gas cylinder that we need. Okay, it looks like we have everything now that we need for the impact hammer. But while we're in here, let's finish this out. So this is a, a little CRT monitor. We'll scrap it, and it should give us, like, electronics and stuff like that. There we go. And we've already scanned the old IBM PC, so we'll scrap that guy. Um, this is a lab computer. Okay. We have a logbook entry for that, so we'll check that out later. But right now, we'll get all the stuff. Okay, we'll check this. And I think that's all that's in here. All right, good. Now, let's go back out here go to the back of our vehicle and we're going to uh, uh, hey, do an impact hammer. Uh, uh, driver, I bet you're dying to hear all about the remnants by now. Oh, can you not? I'm a little busy trying to keep them alive. I'll keep to the basics, I promise. They deserve to know what they're getting into. Fine. I'm giving you 60 seconds. That is not nearly enough time to get... 55 seconds and counting. Okay, okay, okay. The remnants, in short, they're old objects that do all sorts of weird things. They bind themselves to people, and, and you're the latest victim. You and the car are inseparable now, so, so get acquainted. Once the remnant is bound to someone, they become gradually more obsessed with it. It takes over the victim's mind until they go crazy and run off into that the That doesn't sound good. No one has ever been able to resist its siren call. That fixation is probably worming its way into your brain as we speak. Oh. This is the first time we've ever got our hands on one. Uh, but we know all about the past remnants, and oh gosh, this one time it materialized as an old copper kettle, and the tea that came out of that thing, it was... <laughs> and now I'm splitting the transmissions going to your receiver. Anything critical to your immediate needs will broadcast directly and immediately to your radio and headset. 
Anything not mission critical will be on a low priority frequency. Those transmissions will be recorded and indexed for you to listen to at your leisure. Okay. And by low priority, I mean just about everything that comes out of Tobias's <laughs> mouth. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So it tells us we need a couple of gears because we learned the blueprint back at the shop. We can make the gears, assuming we have the stuff, um, which we do because it just re requires uh, scrap metal. So we'll craft two gears, and then we can go back now and make ourselves an impact hammer. Beautiful. Um, now, while we're here, can we also... Yeah, we can make a door. Uh, so let's do that. We can also make a panel. We need um, a couple of those. Um, okay, so let's put the door on first. And then let's grab this panel. Okay, hold on a sec. Um, I need to... Put some of this back in here and we'll put the panel right here except for we have to put it into our hand first we still need a panel for here and we also need to make a headlight too for and we need to make a bumper for our car to be completely uh fixed up but I, uh oh we can make a, a bumper here Do that now and we'll put it in place excellent okay so we just need to make one more panel for right here and I don't know can we do that right now no we can't so we have to make this panel here uh, so we'll get more stuff though as we salvage now if we're in the car and we're looking at the thingy here uh, it tells us, you'll notice that in the upper, uh, or yeah, upper left portion of the car diagram, the panel and the headlight is gray, meaning that it's missing. So, um, very important, like I said, for us to take care of our car and it will take care of us. Let's grab this new impact hammer that we have and let's bust this open and get some plasma. There we go. Okay, so we got a couple plasma thingamadoodles and we got some broken glass, which is great. Uh, we have another one over here. Let's do this. Excellent. And then uh, in order to get into here, we have to use our impact hammer to break this. There we go. Okay, we're inside. It's a beautiful thing. And we have to break this too. More cylinders and chemicals and cartridges. We'll need that for something, I'm sure. Other things. Let's grab all of this with the T key. This game is fun, man. I'm, I, I am really enjoying this so far. Um, very much so. I, I just, there's something about salvaging and scavenging and then taking the parts and making something new out of it that just appeals to me, I suppose. So, but which is a good thing because there's going to be a hell of a lot of that going on in this game. <laughs> That's kind of what it's about. Scavenging simulator, right? Okay, there's a few things over here that we can scavenge. Let's uh, get them real quick. Okay, we just lost our our first scrapper, so it's automatically switches to the new one that I had in my inventory. Whoops. Accidentally hit the right mouse button, which drops things. What the hell is that noise? I don't know, man. It reminds me of Half-Life 2, where when you played Half-Life 2, there was kind of this big um, siren drone horn thing, uh, which was the Combine, and they were bad bad, ju bad juju. I haven't played Half-Life 2 in years. It'd be uh, fun to maybe replay that at some point. Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, uh, or Black Mesa, which is kind of like a, a fan remake of the original game. I do have it, I just haven't played it yet. Uh, okay, so, let's see here. Here, we got something in here we can loot. Press the T key. And I think that's it. Now, if you guys didn't know this, this game uh, and these zones are procedurally generated. I mean, there's some things that will always be the same, but... Um, uh, look at this, we got a dumpster over here. But things can also change, too, from one playthrough to the next, which is cool. 
Wow, look at all that stuff. My word. Okay, we'll take all of it. Yeah, that wasn't a, a magic dumpster. That was just a normal dumpster. Looks like we missed a couple of things here. All right, now over here, um, we have to be careful because notice in the upper left-hand corner, when we get close to this place, we get radiation and we'll start losing some health. So I don't want to, we don't want to spend a lot of time here, but sometimes you can reach through the chain link fence and get to some of the loot. It's not letting me do it there. Um, yeah, see, and that's what I mean by procedurally generated is when I've come through here before, there's been different things that we could, you could get to. But it doesn't look like we can get to that, and we're, we're losing health, so let's just get away from there. I think that wraps up everything we can do in this location. With the extra stuff that we picked up, can we now make another panel? Yes, we can. Okay, let's do that now. And we'll put this here, and then that should make... Oh, no, we, we still need a headlight, too. Do we have stuff to make a headlight? Let's take a look. Um... Up, 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 up. Crude headlight. Excellent. Okay. There we go. Our car is now whole. Still looks like a piece of shit, but hey, it's whole and in good condition. That's all that we can ask for for right now. And I think we're ready to move along here. Let's go. Whoa, Nelly. Okay, now we come to these little spark tower thing me doodles. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to park our vehicle right about here. And so the deal with these is... I, I, I don't know exactly what the purpose of these are. I think we might find that out later. But what you want to do is you want to wait until it starts arcing out in a particular direction before you go in to... Uh, you know, disable the generator so you don't get zapped by it, because it will hurt you, of course. Okay, so we should be good to go. Let's do this. And then we'll grab the glass and the plasma out of that one. Okay, we'll do the same thing at the other two. So that takes care of the three, these three arc antennas. Uh, that weird looking shit there is the border of the stability zone. So if we went on to the other side of that, we would be in instable zone area. And it's bad. So we don't want to do that. I think we'll have to later on for some missions. But for now, we don't need to. So let's not do it. Okay, I'm going to uh, open this back up for a second. And let's just transfer stuff over into here. So we continue to have room in our inventory for things. The plasma thingies that we collect don't show up in our inventory because those are quest items. Um, yeah, so we have them, but we don't have, uh, but we don't have access to do anything with them because they're quest items. All right, let's hop in here, start this up, and move further on down. Introductions. Logbook play. Okay. So, if you remember a little while ago, they were talking about how certain transmissions are low priority. So, when those happen, uh, what we want to do is go into here, go to our logbook, and we go to uh, transmissions. And then, I think, yeah, back at the helm, and I think it was introductions, right? 
Oh, <laughs> my, my. Where are our manners? Uh, driver, we never introduced ourselves. Not really. Tobias Barlow, former Artem maintenance manager. Oh, and um, here with me is Dr. Francis Cook. I was an uh, R&D scientist researching lending technology right here in the zone. We live right in the mid zone. Just, just a hop, skip, and a jump over another big old wall from where you're at. Oh, and, and that old bat over there? That's Dr. Ophelia Turner, <laughs> former bat. director of research and development herself. The mother of limb technology, the maven of electromagnetism. That's enough. Resident party pooper. <laughs> I love the way those guys interact. Okay, so this thingamadoodle allows us to um, transmute one thing to another. Um, so, for example, we could use duct tape and transmute it into a 9-volt battery if we wanted to. So that's what that's all about. We might make use of that at some point. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I want to look and see what's in these guys here. And I think that's it for that. Oh, here we go. Got a decent amount of stuff inside of it. We've got a backpack here. So yeah, all of this stuff that we're doing here is random. So the next time we came through this zone, if we do, you know, we would have a different set of loot uh, to go through. Pick up that nine volt battery there. Here we go. Okay, we need to break this open with our impact hammer. And we get some more chemicals, cartridges, and gas cylinders. And I think that's it for in here. Incidentally, I do have the gamma turned all the way up on this game. It's it's kind of a dark game. Um, but, you know, it doesn't get any brighter than this. Okay, that thing over there, I'm not exactly sure what those damn things are called, but they will, they are hostile. And what they'll do is they'll either grab us or our car and kind of smash us into things. So we want to try and avoid them as much as possible. Looks like we have another dumpster here. Let's see what's in here. Lots of good stuff. We'll take it all. We'll take it all, baby. All right, let's go over here. And we'll transfer all that stuff into our storage. All right, let's look at our map here for a second. So we're right here. We just finished looting all of this stuff. Um, that's our first loot section. So we got something straight ahead that we can loot, and then we'll have another little section here before we get to the radio station. Okay, let's do this. Try and avoid this guy if we can. Okay, we have some cars here uh, to scrap, so I'm going to do that real quick like. Okay, something I'm going to do also, um, because we can, is let's uh, rotate those. Um, if you want to rotate something, by the way, you hold the mouse button down on it, and then you can press R to rotate it, in case you didn't know that. Uh, but I'm going to grab our fuel can, and we can pull a little bit of fuel out of these tanks, uh, just so that we have a full fuel can, in case we... Okay, this is what I call a reverse pothole. So so we're going to see, like, little chunks of earth popping out of the ground. It's just some of the weird shit that happens around here. Okay, let's go around to this side. And, uh, no, I guess it would be this side. Okay. So we might as well just fill our can up so that way it's full in case we need an emergency f refuel. So we have a full can now. We'll put that back there. And let's close the trunk and we're ready to continue on here this first episode is going to be a little bit longer than normal guys um, but I want to I want to get through the first mission um, you know in the first episode so it looks like I missed some 
more cars here. Let me grab these really quick. Okay, so our scrapper uh, just went tits up on us. Um, and actually, I should turn my vehicle off so we're not wasting fuel. That radio station's up on a hill somewhere. Eyes to the horizon. Yeah, we'll get to it, lady. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we just made ourselves a new scrapper. All right, we have another tower and a little uh, shed over here. Or portable bunker thingamadoodle. Let's go take a look in here. It's all Arda's fault, is it? According to them, it is. All right, we got a thing here with some chemicals. A bathroom with a trunk inside. Little tackle box, toolbox. Backpack. A crate of some sort. That had a decent amount of stuff in it. Uh, there does not appear to be anything in here. We can't we can't pick these loose things up. We ha they have to be inside of a container. It's just kind of the way the game works. So, okay, let's go. Um. I'm gonna run over here and get the generator. Let's see where the arc's gonna go. Okay. Okay, let's go. We have one more section um, where we can do a bunch of scavenging and then after that we'll get to the antenna place. Got all these weird mannequins here. Okay, um, we got one of those bad guys over there. Um, let's go ahead and just park right here. Up in here. Toolbox. Okay, I think that's it for this little shack. This vehicle doesn't have anything to loot. Let's go over to this gas station. Oh, you know what? We can actually fill up over here too. So let's do it. I don't know how close we have to be. Let's just go here. We've already filled up our portable gas tank. There we go. Okay. All right. So while we're here, let's uh, run in here really quick and see what we got. Okay. It says uh, we're in a radiation zone, so we're going to take a little bit of damage. <clears throat> so, you know, we don't want to dilly dally here too long. I've already checked that backpack. I think that's it. Yeah, there's no radiation out here. Let's salvage this car. Have we already scanned the steel door? Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that. We've got a crude bumper. Um, But we've already made one of those, so... I think... Can we put that in here and drop it on the ground and then just do this? Yeah, I think we can. It's it's too it's too damn big to 
to store, you know, as a spare. We, you know, we can just make another one if and when the time comes. Okay, I think we're done here. Our scrappers have about half uh, durability left. Let's go. I don't... Th oh shit, this guy's probably going to aggro on us. Uh, nope, we got past him. Okay. I don't think these cars are salvageable. They don't look like they are. Uh, that one is. And I think the one up on the hill is too. Okay, we're in a bit of a radiation spot there. And I think we're good now. Uh, we need to make a new scrapper. Because the one we're currently carrying is just about broken. Let's go. Okay, so the map's not showing any more... Oh, wait a minute. We do have um, what looks to be like a tow truck over here. There's some kind of bug with opening the door there. I don't know what the deal is with it. Okay, that's, a, uh, that's just a normal tire. I think we've already scanned all those. Okay. All right, let's scrap this guy. We are in an irradiated zone, too, so we can't spend a ton of time here. Uh, in fact, we should probably take a health kit here fairly soon. Don't think there's anything else on this to salvage. Uh, we do have this vehicle here, though. I am aware of my health. Alright, let's just get out of this radiation zone altogether. Okay, so this is where we go to uh, get to the um, antenna. So we'll just go up this road here. Okay, um, let's do a medical thingy here. Okay, that should heal us all the way back up. I think it heals us all the way back up. to the antenna station. Whoops. Okay, let's we'll salvage.
All right, I think that's um, all we can salvage here. So let's grab the rate broadcast transmitter. There we go. Time to get moving. The instability's ticking up by the second. But you can't get back the way you came. The instability makes all routes one way. And that's where my Octavice comes into play. It'll get you back to the garage, but it needs to be charged first. And to do that, you'll need anchors. Take a look at the Octavice display. It maps all anchors in the nearby area. Find an anchor and feed it to the Octavice to charge it. Uh, but don't you worry your pretty little head about how it works. We'll be out of here soon, so there's no reason to learn more about limb technology than you need to know. Okay, so each one of these little yellow things has a place that we can go to that um, we can essentially harvest power. The hell is that? <laughs> uh, that we need to charge our arc device in order to warp back to the garage. Um, but what we want to do too, though, is we want to um, we want to grab extra of that power because we also need it to uh, you know f for a, some crafting stuff back at the back at the base. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try and grab all of them before we take off. Okay, a tiny test. We got a new log here. Let's see what that's all about. Hey, Hoppy, like, look, I, I keep thinking the way you're helping our friend here right now seems positively helpful. I, seems like me, you're looking to turn a new leaf or something. The only thing I want to look at is a 12-year-old whiskey <laughs> and the back of this breacher's head when I sent them packing. But isn't it worth taking a detour to run just a tiny little test? Can't think of a worse way to spend my time. Please. I've seen you manipulate waveforms with your right hand and knock back a double with your left. Or am I to understand you've <laughs> lost your touch? What I'm understanding is that you won't shut the hell up until I test this remnant. <laughs> yep. Fine. Stop crowding my frequency. What? Wait. Really? Hoppy, darling. You never darling. give in this easily. What's what's going on? Francis? Oh, y yes? How have you not thrown him to the bunnies by now? <laughs> the bunnies. <laughs> 80 years old and only getting sharper by the day. You're a legend. A role model. I'm giving you 10 seconds to get out of my... Okay, okay, uh, we're signing off. Hey, driver, good luck out there. Uh, and watch out for the bunnies. They are a doozy. The bunnies. Okay. All right, so we got three Ginnies over here. Um, let's see if we can get them. Oops. Shit. Okay, yeah, I didn't, uh, I waited too long. Let's go heal back up, because we took a serious damage there. Hey, cut that out. Right click on this. Um, that thingy over there is the power that we got to get for the the arc device. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try and get this stuff first. Okay, Let's see where it's gonna arc next. Okay, let's go over here. Grab all this stuff. Run back out of the way. See, it tried to zap us while we were standing there. All right, let's wait for it to arc out again. Okay, we should be good. There we go. Okay, so that shuts that thing down. Got all the little pieces of glass here. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, when we pick this thing up... It's going to start damaging us because it it's irradiated, and it's also going to cause more of these reverse potholes to sort of kind of chase us. So we need to grab it and then get the hell out of Dodge. Actually, you know what, though? Before we do that, let's get these plasma thingies, too. We might as well while we're here. Oh, 
Oppie did say that things are starting to become more unstable, so I think that's why we're seeing um, a bunch of these reverse potholes. I don't know if that's what they're actually called. That's just what I call them, by the way. All right, let's get over here. Okay, cool. So we got some more plasma genies. We're at 77% health. Here we go. Oh, actually, let's scan this first. Okay, anchor plug. Let's Those go. anchors may look like glowing balls of magic, but it's limb tech through and through. Don't be scared. They haven't exploded in anyone's face. Recently. Recently. Okay, so what we gotta do is install this in there to store the power. And let's get moving. Device is charged and ready. You'll use it to open a gateway back to the garage. But oh, it's a left my door open. when you're absolutely ready to leave. You do not want to get caught in the storm that follows. Okay. Let's grab this one here too. Um, and what I'm actually gonna do is turn around. I'm going to leave the car running. Okay, let's go. Oh, shit! Yeah, see, it'll start trying to attack us with reverse potholes. That's why we need to get out of here. Okay, so let's um let's stop here for just a second. And we want to go back to these other two locations and get the rest of this power because like I said we're going to need it for other stuff later. Okay, I'm going to um take another medi pack. And I just happened to park within a radiation zone, which wasn't the smartest thing. Okay, and then the last power anchor thingamadoodle is over this way. Let me stop for a second. Uh, we want to mark that. Okay. It's up that way. Um, I don't know if we run into those guys if something happens, so let's not take any chances. Okay, I guess, um, what we're after is up on the hill there. So let's run up there and get it. Might have been better for me to stay up on the, uh, up higher, but I wasn't entirely sure where, where I, I was going. Have we been up here already? Oh, no, we haven't. Okay. Yeah, let's loot this stuff. food that gives us health okay wonder if it has any other ill effects considering it's probably 30 years old not sure all right let's salvage the car before we grab the 
limb attack there. Ah, shoot. Our thingy uh, just broke. Okay, whatever. I don't want to go back down, make a new one, and then come all the way back up here, so we're just going to go. Alright. So, now what we want to do is we want to get close to these gateways. Um, oh shoot, we just got nabbed by one of those bastards. Dude, not cool. Knock it off. So let's move towards that waypoint because you don't want to activate the gate until you're uh, close to... Whoa. You know, close to the gate. Because if you activate it and you're really far away from it, you might not be able to get to it. Um, we want to salvage that. We kind of do. <laughs> I can't help myself, you guys. Uh, we need to make a new thingy doodle. New scrapper. Okay. Okay, we're starting to get uh, completely filled up in here with some some things which is good good thing to have happen so we are gonna have to go cross country to get uh, close to these gateways um, which is fine you just have to be careful of the car of course can't damage it if we get into too rough a terrain. Oh, don't worry about me. Take your time. If you never get back to the garage, that suits me just fine. Shut up, Poppy. Don't be a bitch. Okay. I don't think we can be super close to it, though, either. We just have to be close enough to where we can get to it when the countdown starts. Car is not lootable. Uh, okay, yeah, let's start stop here because I think if we're inside of that um, triangular area, it might not let us do it. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah. Oh, see that? See that gateway is too close. Okay, here. Let's um, let's back up until it's not too close. There we go. Okay. Yeah, see, it doesn't let you get really close to it. Okay, here we go. This is the one we're going for. You see that glowing pillar in the sky? Drive into it. Yes, it looks like hot death, but it's so much better than getting scrambled by the instability. All right, here we go. We're driving right on into the hot death. Yeehaw! And we're back. Nice. Look at our car, too. Our car's in, like, perfect oh, condition. Oh, well, well. You're alive. We're certain if the zone didn't get you, that gateway would. It yeah, don't sound so well, disappointed, lady. Did I not mention that you're the first human I've sent through that thing? I mean, <laughs> rodents, but it's not like it's completely untested. But anyway, it worked. So, you should have made it back with everything you collected out there. That's the beauty of the gateway. It's the only way to get back with all your marbles intact. Now, take those parts you found into the back room. I'll let you use my fabrication station. For now. That station will concoct ways for you to rig up anything from roof racks to flare guns. Assembling an antenna with those parts you brought back should be easy as pie, but it requires anchor juice to work its magic, so bring back as many as you can. And just because I haven't used that garage in decades doesn't mean you can trash the place, mess up my equipment, and I'll throw you to the anomaly so quick you'll get whiplash. We clear? Uh, yeah, we're clear. Okay, um, can we loot this?
Okay, cool. So I gave us some extra stuff there. All right, guys. Well, I think what we're going to do is actually we're going to save the game first. Um, we'll save in that slot. Um, because this is the only place we can save. And um, stuff resets, too, because if you guys remember, I salvaged this entire car before. So now we can re-salvage it, which is kind of cool. And, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to officially end the episode here. Uh, but for those of you who are interested and want to stick around before I um, actually end the episode, I'm going to read through our logbook and get caught up on that. But for those of you who don't want to stick around for that, uh, we will... Uh, do a soft ending here. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode And if you did, please hit that like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and don't forget to uh, check out the membership uh, with the join button uh, If you're interested love to have you come and join us up uh, and get some cool perks. All right, so bye Okay for the rest of you um, Let's go ahead and just get caught up on our logbook before we actually wrap things up here um and I will well, you know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to take all this stuff here and store it in the locker, but I'll do that off of camera. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's get caught up on our logbook here. All right, so starting with our user manual, we have a crafting thing, crafting tools and supplies. Yeah, that's pretty basic. We all know about that. Dry preparation basically says just make sure all, all the stuff that you have, uh, you have all the stuff you need before you take out, uh, take off. Let's read this. Instability. Your route through the zone will be stable when you set out, but it won't stay that way for long. Monitor the instruments attached to the map display in the passenger seat. They will help you track instability levels. If those levels are high, a storm is very likely. Some things you'll do in the zone will increase instability, but you can outrun it by moving along your route. Nevertheless, the zone's behavior isn't always predictable, especially when you open a gateway and sometimes there's nothing to do but drive like hell. Okay, interesting. Um, zone conditions. Whenever you make it through... Unusual conditions or sudden shifts in the zone, your logbook will be updated with the information about what just happened, and then you can study that stuff to learn about it. Very cool. Okay. Quick slots. Yeah, we know about quick slots. That's our toolbar. Surviving the zone. While you're driving through the zone, exploration is essential. If you get lost, check the map in your passenger seat, and don't be afraid to go off-road, as you never know what you might find. Gathering resources is key to your survival. Look for vehicles and abandoned, ve uh, ab ab bloop, abandoned buildings. Cars can be a great source of fuel, common materials like scrap metal, and sometimes a decent spare part. And don't forget, much of what you find in the zone can be scanned for more information. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, safe returns. You made it back safely. Before heading out again, consider repairing any damaged car parts, unloading the supplies you gathered, and crafting new items for your next run. Any new roads you've charted are automatically uploaded, and the anchor energy you obtained is stored for later use. That's why we got the, you know, those extra anchors. Because uh, if you noticed, Oppie told us that we could use it in her fabricator, which we'll do in the next episode. All right, we got some new stuff here. Lab computer. Um, telephone transcript. Central Exchange Monitoring, July 9th, 1963. Hello, hello? Is that the office of Dr. Turner? No, no, the other Dr. Turner. Doesn't matter. I have good news. The best news. Your new computers are up and running. We did it. And these powerhouses are going to absolutely blow you away. We've got some of the world's very best discrete RTL-based integrated circuits with central processing unit running at one and a half megahertz. Nice. All of this is able to address half a million characters of memory. Uh, we've even got a 32-bit word link. It's hard to imagine a more powerful machine. What's more, these things barely weigh 70 pounds. It's truly amazing. You absolutely must come down and see one in action. I think Arda might well have pushed computing as far as it will ever go. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, gas station. When we get gas there, we all know about that. Let's read about these sodium vapor lights. Memo FAO, all staff, December 28, 1975. Further to my correspondence on the 24, of the 24th, I am writing to advise each and every one of you that the forthcoming disco time will not be going ahead. Moreover, I'm extremely disappointed that I find it necessary to remind all employees that inappropriate and unauthorized use of ARDA equipment is very obviously a violation of organization policy, not to mention profoundly unprofessional. The lighting rigs, arrays, spotlights, and racks that we have requisitioned are precisely calibrated, specially Don't constructed. You haven't been snooping. You know where the back room is. Shut up, Bobby. Um, they are specifically designed to work in the zone conditions for remote deployment and to withstand radiation and EMP. They are not for modifying with colored filters, rainbow banners, or beat synced variable resistors. <laughs> uh, frankly, I'm appalled that I have to compose a memo such as this. And when I find those responsible, which I shall, rest assured, there will be severe consequences. This is the Olympic exclusion zone, not Miami Beach. 
Okay. So, uh, plasma generator. Private field notes. Dr. A.F. Kinky. Date unknown. As we continue to explore viable energy solutions in the increasingly unstable environment that is the zone, we have begun testing the first handheld plasma containment devices. In a zone plagued with radiation, instability, electromagnetic interference, and as many as yet unexplained phenomena, any infrastructure created for energy transmission has proven to be all but useless. Hence our investigations into the potential of charged and even magnetized plasma, studying both the conductive and capacitive qualities of the samples we have contained. Plasma would likely be far more efficient than diesel and gasoline we've been forced to haul from place to place, and if the latest research from the Lim Tech team is to be believed, we may soon have a way to make it just as portable. At present, we await updates from Dr. Essed as she finalizes her report on Birkeland Currents. Art of management are keen for us to test this technology in the field as soon as possible, but we don't believe it is yet ready. They are, as ever, simply trying to rust research and save money, just like the real world. Abandoned car. Um, transmission fragment, Art of Field Headquarters, October 9th, 1968. I guess I'm saying that all we know is obvious by now, but all vehicles, all moving collections of metal really seem to attract the attention of a great many anomalies. They get chased. They get attacked for whatever reason. They get picked apart. I guess aircraft move too fast or maybe helicopters aren't around for long enough, but cars, this place in its wildlife just loves cars. Sorry, what? Okay, correction. It's not wildlife. What? Why? And gender sympathy, look, I'm only repeating what other people say. No, I don't think it's bad to say this over the radio. It's not like our transmissions even travel anywhere these days. It's like trying to broadcast through molasses or something. I can be on top of a mountain and still get no damn reception. Trust me, nobody outside the zone can hear us. All right, all right, keep your cap on. You New England nut bar, this, this is exactly why nobody likes you. <laughs> okay, so it's just telling us basically that um, the anomalies seem to like metal and moving metal in particular and that uh, no transmissions can leave the exclusion zone. Tow truck. Transmission fragment. Origin unknown. Dana unknown. Broken down? Of course we've broken down. Do you need me to recap? We had our door stolen by one of those floating things. We had our battery drained by one of those bouncing things. We had our wheels ruined by one of those spiky things. We are dragging. Uh, we were dragged into a tree by, by, you know, one of those other things. So yes, we have broken down. Don't act so surprised. Are we the first ever people to break down out here? Why do you think you exist? Why do you think we gave you that truck? You know what? You're not fast enough. And I, what? Another job. Who? We? We broke down first. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Uh, all right. So that does it for all of our resource notes. We have um, conditions notes, perpetual stability, uh, which is basically not instability. <laughs> the instability storm will not be changing here unless summit. Right. Okay. Um, here we got a bunch of parts, things, pressurized can canisters, a handful of small pressurized containers that could be used for both low ve velocity propulsion and in a rudimentary shock absorption. Okay, so we'll probably be making shocks out of those. Uh, those remind me of the little COT cartridges that I used to put in my pellet gun uh, when I was a kid for target practice. Okay, fabric, clothes, right. Gas cylinders, large robust container designed to hold gases under pressure. It's stalwart and heavy and could have many applications. Gotcha. Plasma. We already read about that. It's basically energy inside of a glass thing, and uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, canned food. Certain dried foods can last a remarkably long time, and the expiry date is only ever a guide, right? Yeah. I think I think canned food is supposed to give us health, but I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out. A stable anchor. This anchor is in good condition and has been doing its job very well. Tampering with it for any reason might affect the region of the zone, but then again, it would be such a beneficial resource to have. Okay, so that's the, the anchor icon. Uh, gateway. The way home, this is the way out, and you should be double timing it here rather than spending your last few seconds scanning things. Right. Okay. Uh, so that gets us caught up on that stuff. This is the crafting log. Uh, right here, refine. Steel sheet. A broad, flat section of this strong, light, and durable metal. Ideal for use in panels, doors, and other bodywork. So that, that'll be like our next um, grade up, if you will, for, for our crude panels that we've been using for our car. But I think, yeah, we need the fabrication station before we can start making those. Okay, we've got a note here over in the auto shop. A truly, a gateway link, a truly unique marvel of modern technology. There's nothing like this anywhere in the world. Could anyone else even come close to understanding and creating such a thing? I don't know. I don't know, man. We've Okay, so it looks like we've already read all that other stuff. And that gets us caught up, woot, on our logbook. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to end the episode Um for reels and in the next episode we'll pick up right where we left off do a couple things here around the base including uh figuring out 
how to get to the fabricator, which means we've got a breakthrough here, I think. And then we'll take the next mission and continue having fun here in Pacific Drive. Thanks. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.